So this video is going to illustrate how to open up and potentially service the 9-continent RH-212 or FH-212 direct drive hub motors. The process is similar to a lot of other direct drive hub motors, and the requirements for this are really just two tools. Uh, you need a T20 Torx driver, or Torx bit, in order to remove the side cover bolts, and you need a gear puller in order to push the stator out of the assembly. Now it is possible to do this without a gear puller using a lot of manual force or body weight um, in order to overcome the magnetic attractions, but it's really worth investing in a gear puller if you expect to need to open up and work on a hub motor like this. So the nine continent motors here um, are different than a lot of other direct drives in that they only have one side plate. The back plate of the motor is a single piece casting, uh, so that reduces the amount of bolts to potentially disassemble um, and also reduces the amount of points of potential water ingress or sealing that you have to look after. So we start off with our T20 Torx and unscrew those. Um, Um, I recommend using an impact driver if you have one. It certainly helps break any Loctite that's present on the threads there um, and allows for a nice, quick and clean disassemble of screws, even screws that are a little bit old or seized up into place. Um, but if you don't have an impact driver, of course, you can just use a hand driver. So with the side plate bolts fully removed, what we're looking to do now with the gear puller is to push on the motor axle from the opposite side as the side plate that's coming off, and that's going to move the entire contents and guts of the motor out this way. Um, and in so doing, it's going to break the seal that exists between the side plate and the rotor body here. Um, that seal is, uh, is bonded with silicone, and if you don't have a gear puller, you need quite a bit of force to pry that off. Um, some people will try to wedge in like an X-Acto knife or a sharp blade in order to initially break that seal to facilitate uh, the removal here, but if you have a gear puller, that and ohm will put enough force. Uh, really important that you first remove the nut and any additional hardware on this axle because the axle has to go all the way through the ball bearing. And if you push the stator out but forget the nut on there, you're not going to be able to complete the removal of the stator. Okay, so here I'm showing this process on an unlaced hub motor. Um, you can do all of this disassembly work even if the motor is laced into a rim because the lacing is done on the hub shell and isn't tied into the side cover plate. Um, so now as I tighten the gear puller, that was the sound of the side cover adhesive uh, ripping loose. And as I continue to turn this, you'll see the motor stator open out. Okay, while you're pushing this axle through, you'll notice that you're pushing on the side that has the cable exit coming through it. And it's good just to keep a watchful eye to make sure that you're not catching um, or further damaging the cable where it exits the side axle here. Um, the axle has a channel carved into it in order to give a bit of room for the cable while it pushes out of the bearing. Um, and it's a, a good idea to just keep a close watch on that so that you don't um, further damage the, the cable while you're pushing the contents out. Okay, so at that point, I just felt all of the residual uh, magnetic attraction break free. So now the stator is totally loose. Um, you want to be careful at this point as you separate the rest of it, not to momentarily realign the stator into position and allow it to slam itself back in. Uh, so leave the gear puller in place while you pull the axle out the rest of the way. And, and now we can tease these two items apart. So now we've removed the stator and one of the side plates. If you wanted to service this side plate itself, then you want to remove this side plate from the axle as well. Um, that's also done with the gear puller. Um, and once again, you want to remove the hardware um, and install the gear puller on this side cover, pressing against the center of the axle. And now I have the stator completely free and then both side covers and shells free. Now you notice in this case here, when I pulled off the motor shell, uh, the ball bearing stayed on the axle um, rather than staying inside the shell. It's a bit of a 50-50 you know, gamble which side the bearing fits in. It just depends which particular interference fit was the most tight. Um, on this side plate, the ball bearing has stayed in the side cover rather than on the axle itself. Um, so if this was a case where you wanted to replace, say, a damaged uh, cassette free hub, um, you can further remove the free hub body itself. It's the same number T20 Torx driver that holds the six bolts of the cassette in place.
So the cassette for your body is uh, held on with the six bolts, but it's quite a tight fit inside there. And you could either clamp that inside a vise and really try to, to pry it off. Um, you can also go at it with a bar pushing from the inside. So here I've got a, an old axle that has a small little lip on it that's able to catch the inside of the free hub. Um, and then I just take that. And then now I've removed the uh, cassette free hub assembly. Um, so if you were to replace this part, you simply swap out a new one um, and then put the six bolts back in there. Um, if you're taking the part to replace the ball bearing, now you have access to the bearing and the side cover. And again, you would just press that bearing out um, with whatever press you have access to or a dead blow hammer if you don't have access to a press. Um, with the stator itself, uh, if you remove the stator in order to replace a hall sensor, the three hall sensors in this motor are just inserted into stator slots um, on the stator assembly. If you're opening it up because you have a damaged cable harness, um, you can see a very easy access to the cable. It, it travels through a diagonal channel through the axle. Um, so if this had an axle spin out instead of the wires, you could cut off all the cables here, uh, pull, the, pull the cable out, and then replace it with a new motor cable um, in order to repair the motor. Um, when you're reassembling the motor, it's just exactly the same process in reverse. Um, but you have to be really careful about how you reinsert the stator assembly into the rotor. Because you have all of that magnetic attraction, if you're not careful, they can jam in and wedge at an angle. At an angle. You can also pinch your fingers. Uh, so I'll show you one of the techniques that we use here around the shop uh, for the reassembly, um, for the reinsertion of the stator into the strong magnets. And I just put the stator in a temporary holder here. Now before you reassemble this motor for real, um, when we pulled it apart, all of the silicone sealant that joined the two halves together got left behind as a bunch of strings of silicone. Um, so it's really, really important if you want to maintain the waterproof nature of this motor to scrape off all of that silicone from the initial installation and then reapply a fresh bead all around the flange that mates with the side cover plate. Um, it should be enough that when you squeeze the two together, it kind of oozes out the crack. Um, you can always clean that, up, clean that up afterwards, but any um, points that fail to get the silicone could be an avenue either for water to come in, or if you're injecting this motor with stator aid, it becomes a place where stator aid could uh, leak its way out. So yeah, so recommend this wipe back clean. Actually, it comes off quite easily just with your finger. Um, you can just roll it up into little beads and make sure that you've got um, a nice, totally smooth metal-only surface to reapply. So for reinserting the stator into the shell, um, what I like to do is support the stator on something where it's free to, to move up on and it's being held really nice and flat. Any random bucket or container that allows the axle to stick through the back end will serve this purpose quite well. Um, so make sure we feed the cable through. And uh, what we want to do here is hold the stator um, so that it stays as parallel as possible to the axle when we feed that on, and then it will just snap shut right down. And so be really careful, of course, not to have your fingers in between. You're holding it on the outer flange. You've got a nice gap between where the side plate itself is. And then the magnetic attraction will just slam the two pieces together, um, but uh, gentle enough not to cause any harm. Um, so the silicone that uh, I'm using here is a black RTV. Uh, black is convenient because then it blends in well with the black motor side cover. But you can honestly use just about any uh, silicone sealant from the hardware store. It does the job just fine. That's good. So then when I close the side cover this time, you're going to see the black silicone ooze out. Um, when you drive these back in, I still use an impact driver, but you want to be careful not to overpower it. The Torx head is quite strong. It doesn't strip very easily. Uh, you're just going into aluminum threads in the rotor of the motor. Um, so be a little delicate with the trigger. And in usual practice, the best to stagger the insertion of the screws. So that's it. Really easy to service, open and work on hub motor design. 
Um, I really like having just a single side plate instead of having one on either side of the shell because it's just one less thing to seal, one less set of bolts to potentially open up. Um, and uh, hopefully if you ever have any need to open up and do work on these motors, uh, you'll find it comes, comes apart and goes back together just as easily as it did in that demo.